Hello team and welcome back to this video where I'm going to be teaching you what you need to know about the three main tools used in carving, where you can get them from and how much they'll cost you. So we've got the tools here down on the table. You could add a pruning saw, a folding saw to this if you so wished. It does make your life a little bit easier and they only cost about $10. But the three main tools for actual carving are laid out in front of us here. Let's get the other ones out of the way, or let's get two of the three out of the way, and we'll start with the hook knife. Now this is a redesigned hook knife from Mora. They used to do, well they still have them out available, though I don't necessarily recommend them, the older version 164 that doesn't have the sheath. The sheath is a really good idea, it protects the blade, it keeps it sharper for longer, and it also protects you from getting cut as well. It's a very simple design sheath, but it's solid, it's bomb proof. And if you have got another hook knife, maybe you've got the older 164, just put something around that edge to protect it. It really doesn't matter what, as long as you're not gonna get cut through it and it's not going to cut through it itself. It's got an oiled birch handle, very simple, very typical Swedish design, timeless design, it's beautiful. Nice and comfortable, be it slightly small for my hands, but it does the job absolutely fine. These are somewhere around about the 50 Australian dollar mark, and the newer version's still slightly difficult to get hold of because retailers are selling the older version at the moment, but it doesn't really matter. They've redesigned a few things, made it a little bit more ergonomic, they've removed the sharp point, which you could have just snapped off if you wanted to. To sharpen this blade, although we'll cover sharpening in a different video, very, very simple. I always recommend sharpening on the inside of a hook knife. It's easy for you and it just gives you more of, or a more surface area for that stick or that dowel to register for you to be able to sharpen accurately. So 50 bucks, very easy to get, grab it online. And as I said, I'll cover sharpening in a separate video. But you can't really go wrong. Is it perfect? No, it's not. You're not going to get a perfect hook knife made by machine, or at least nothing that's available at the moment. If you really want to get a good quality hook knife, and it's the first tool that I recommend you spend decent money on if you know you want to stay in the craft, but it will get you going. It will cut nice and cleanly, and I'll demonstrate that later. So that's the hook knife. If you Google Moraniv 164, you can have a look around and see where they're advertising it. It's pretty obvious to tell the difference between the two, the newer and the older version. Get the newer one if you can. It's redesigned, just better all round, and it comes with the sheath as well. So the second tool is, of course, the Sloyd knife. Now this isn't like your typical pocket knife, your EDC knife, your fishing, your hunting knife. It's got one main difference, and that is what we call a Scandi bevel. Now this one on here is slightly different because I've put my own grind on here. I've put on what's called a flat over hollow grind, and that just helps speed up sharpening and stropping in the future. But as you can see, it's got one wide bevel here, which is really nice for a few different reasons. First, it's very easy to sharpen. It doesn't take much effort. You register that flat bevel onto your sharpening medium, and then you've got that nice surface to get good feedback and a good response from. When you've got small micro bevels, it can be a bit difficult to, to gauge that accurately, but we haven't got that problem in carving. Same handle as the 164, so this is called the Mora 106. They do a smaller version, the Mora 120. It really just depends on what you feel more comfortable with. The longer blade is helpful when you are carving, you can reach further across, but with that length comes a little bit more of a, a likelihood for you to actually cut yourself and, uh, they're not necessarily gonna be major cuts, they're gonna be slight little nicks that kind of go across your skin when you're not really paying a huge amount of attention. But apart from that, it's a pretty good steel. It's a laminated steel, so it's got softer steel on the outside and a harder steel insert. It keeps the cost down, it keeps, or it makes sharpening easier for you guys. The only thing I'd say, and the thing that's become really apparent with sharpening these knives, is I've seen a lot of people the vast majority of people that have these knives for a while, you'll see that this bevel starts to increase or widen, which actually decreases the angle. This is a problem for a couple of reasons. Firstly, a wider bevel makes it harder to cut around corners. A flat wide bevel makes it hard to cut around corners without chatter. And secondly, because you're reducing the angle, you're gonna increase the likelihood of getting chips, which means you're gonna have to sharpen more often. The reason this happens, and if it's happened to you, there is a way of correcting it. The reason it happens is that softer steel on the outside abrades away quicker than the hard inside. And if you're applying even pressure on your sharpening stone, that's exactly what's gonna happen. 
So when you're sharpening these blades, just put a little bit more emphasis. Don't rock the blade over onto the cutting edge, but just put a bit more pressure onto the cutting edge itself and you'll be able to abrade that steel much more evenly and maintain that same size bevel. Very cheap, they're around about 30 Australian dollars, 35 Australian dollars, and uh, they come pretty good, pretty sharp. Very easy to sharpen though, and again, I'll cover that in another video. But there's not really much more to say. It's got a through tang, so it's a nice sturdy design, simple, comfortable handle, pretty good steel, not the best, but it's absolutely sufficient to get you going. And in fact, I know a lot of professional carvers that still use this blade, just because it's pretty much bomb-proof. It's got a really good sheath as well. Good sheath in that it's good in protection, but I don't like the fact that it's a friction fit purely because it's either locked or it's not. There's no real halfway. So when you kind of take this knife out, if you pull it, it's gonna all of a sudden give way. Much better is to twist the handle in the sheath and then gently release it, much safer that way. And that's the Mora 106, so give it a Google. You could probably buy these two from the same shop. Chances are if they're selling one, they're gonna sell the other. And last but not least is the axe hatchet, whatever you want to call it. This is a Grunz Force Brooks Small forest axe I modified a number of years ago. You can see it's been through the wars. I haven't really looked after this one that well because this is my beat around axe. This isn't my primary carving axe. I'm gonna go into my own main tools that I use professionally at a later date. But what you really need is just a cheap and cheerful hatchet from the shop. Maybe grab yourself a file to flatten the bevels. Might cost you $10 for the axe, $5 for the file, and that's all you need. I have got flat bevels on here, and as I said, this isn't used for carving anymore. I use this to remove the bark off of um, the billets of wood that I'm working. Bark tends to grab a lot of grit and dust and dirt and everything that can damage your edge. So this is a fairly dull, blunt edge, but it's really only used for peeling bark and splitting wood. When you're using it for carving though, you will need to have it very sharp. If your ax isn't sharp, then you're gonna find it's gonna glance off a lot of the time. It's just gonna make it far more dangerous and it's just not gonna be as enjoyable. Fairly easy to sharpen. Again, I'll cover sharpening, but just pop to your hardware store, find something that's light, that's comfortable, and that's all you really need. The ax is only there to waste away wood. You're not doing very fine carving detail with it. So I would say out of the three tools, if you want to upgrade at any stage, make the first upgrade the hook knife. The hook knife is a very difficult pattern geometrically to get right so that it cuts curves smoothly without chatter, that it conforms to the shape of the bowl and it's easy to sharpen. Second would be the Sloyd knife. Change that and get something that's gonna last you a little bit longer in between sharpens. Maybe it's made with a better steel, just crafted with a little bit more finesse, refined, harder still, easier to keep, sharper for longer. And then lastly, the hatchet, if you're gonna go in that order, not very important really, you're just wasting away wood. Something light, something comfortable to hold, really doesn't have to be anything special. Keep it sharp with the file, and obviously stones or your abrasive medium, which I'll cover shortly, and that's all you need to really worry about. Again, of course, a good sheath is absolutely essential, especially with the ax, and I will be doing uh, an ax safety video. I've already got one on, but if you're watching this and it's been a while since I've uh, posted this video, that video may have gone already and I'll be starting another one. But that's it, cheap, cheerful, easy to uh, hold, nothing too heavy that's gonna get you tired very quickly, and uh, that's all you really need to get started. As I said, you can add to this a folding saw. I do recommend it, but I don't consider it necessarily a carving tool. And uh, that's all you need to get started. You can do this for under 100 Australian dollars. That's roughly around about 60 pounds or 75 US dollars, somewhere around about there. And you're ready to get started. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Please don't hesitate to leave any comments in the comments section below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell to be notified of any content that I upload. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It just helps people like myself to be able to continue to take out the time to do these videos to help you guys at home. So. Until next time, I'll speak to you guys very, very soon. Happy carving, and as I said, drop me a message if you're stuck with anything, and I'll do my best to respond as quick as I can.